In the name of Allah, the Merciful, whom I praise and worship, I pray that all, our, all of our sins will be forgiven and the blessings and mercy of His will be showered on us. I, your host, Abdul Hakim Ali, welcome you to a new episode of Prophetic Traits. I'm glad to have you here with us while we try to explore and learn <clears throat> and get access to a little of the life of the greatest man ever, Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'm glad that you're in your living room, in your home, in your office, next to your family and children, enjoying the time with us while we try to ignite our life with a little joy. But at times, where joy is so hard to find. The Prophet, peace be upon him, Muhammad, he was just not a messenger and a prophet only. He was a true, complete man. If there was perfection ever, existing in any creations, it would have been Muhammad, peace be upon him. In recent episodes, my dear brothers and sisters, we've talked about a few, uh, uh, many aspects of the life of the Rasul And today, inshallah, we will talk about his courage, <coughs> excuse me, his bravery, how he was at the times of calamities, how he, with his energy and power, and bravery had everyone embrace him and we found the courage within his followers the prophet peace be upon him never understood what cowardice is all about that wasn't part of what he is and one of the hadiths during the time they they were at night in the city of Medina everybody's asleep resting there was a sound a voice. Something was happening at the borders of Medina. It was assumed to be an attack. The Rasul rushed out of his house, got on top of his horse, marched towards where the uh, voice is, and the Sahaba actually went out going towards that direction. When they got halfway towards the source of the sound, they found that the Prophet, peace be upon him, is coming back and calming them down and saying, no need to fear. There's nothing there that can harm. He was quicker than all of them, faster than all of them to get to the source of the voice. Courage. He's the head of the state. And that did not hold him back. He did not blow the whistle to his soldiers and to the army to march. He was the first one to march. Listen to this narration by Ali ibn Abi Talib. رضي الله تعالى عنهم. May Allah be pleased with him. He said, Whenever the battle gets heated and it gets vicious, we run behind the Prophet, peace be upon him, and hide. He was always in the front, the front of the army, in the front of the battle, in the front lines. He was not hiding in the rear, waiting to be protected. Actually, he was the protector of those who were with him. He was the protector of his own religion. In previous episodes, I'm sure you recall and remember with me, that he once said to his uncle, when he was offered a peace treaty, offered an agreement to where he becomes the greatest man in a sense of wealth, family, and fame and power. They said, if you wish us to give you money that you become the richest among us or to marry the most beautiful woman or to be the head of our state and to lead us, we're willing to do so. In return, you stop calling to your call. He wasn't looking for that. He could have had it if he wanted, but he didn't take it. And in fact, 
He was the first to march out, the first to put himself in danger and return to protect the companions. Peace be upon them all. During the Battle of Hunayn, there were over 10,000 of the believers. Some say there are 12,000 of them. 10,000 that marched from Medina and 2,000 that walked and marched with the Prophet and the companions from Mecca. They headed towards Hunayn. In the middle, they were trapped in between two mountains. The enemy had prepared themselves well. The archers were shooting them again and again. And all of a sudden, that tight army scattered. They start to flee and run. And they left Muhammad, the prophet, peace be upon him, alone. He didn't run with those who were running. He pushed his mule forward. He pushed his horse forward. Marching towards the enemy, not fearing the consequences, even though the companions have left him. And they're running towards the sea. Abu Sufyan said at that moment of time, he said, Wallahi, nothing is going to stop them except the water. The sea is going to stop them. He saw them running so fast and so quickly out of fear. They're terrified that he said only the water is going to stop them. But the Rasul marched towards the enemy, screaming with as loud as he can. Ana nabiyyu la kathib. Ana ibn Abdul Muttalib. I am the prophet and that's not a lie. I am the son of Abdul Muttalib. His uncle Abbas was next to him. He had to grab on his horse. He's grabbing it, holding on to the rope, pulling the Rasul back because he's scared that the Rasul might get harmed. And then, he calls on the people to come back. It is said in the history, there was only a hundred people, a hundred soldiers around the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the process, during that time. 12,000 took off, ran away, fled. And he and a hundred, a mere hundred individuals stood to defend this faith. Courage at its peak. Courage at its strength. One day, he was sleeping under a tree. There were no guards. By the way, brothers and sisters, the Rasul wasallam did not have guards around him. Soldiers and these artilleries. He didn't live in dungeons. He didn't live in High halls, behind high walls. He lived in a simple home made out of mud. So he was sleeping under a tree. And then there's a man whose name is Abu Ghawrath. Oh, Ghawrath. And he came with his sword, tiptoeing, tiptoeing, trying to surprise the Rasul until he stood over his head with the sword in his hands. And he said, Ya Muhammad, man yamna'uka minni al-yawm. Oh Muhammad, who can protect you from me today? He saw that. He's all alone. The Rasul is unarmed. His weapon is hanging on the tree. And he has a sword in his hands. And he said, who can protect you from me today? With full faith, brothers and sisters, the answer was Allah. Allah can protect me. And all of a sudden, the sword fell from his hand. And the Rasul picked it up and said, Ya Ghawrath, who can protect you from me? He said, No one, Ya Muhammad. He said, do you believe in me? He said, no. But if you let me go, I will never, never fight against you again. 
and he forgave him and let him go. What courage, what bravery. During the battle of Uhud, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was with the army fighting. He left 50 of his soldiers on a mountain, small hill. They were all archers so they could protect the rear of the army. And he advised them and ordered them that they are not to leave their position no matter what happens, whether the Muslims are victorious or defeated. The battle started and it seemed that the Muslims are victorious. The archers forgot, disobeyed, came down from the hill. The enemy was prepared. They went around the hill under the command of Khalid ibn al-Walid and surprised the Muslims from behind. And their aim and target was to assassinate and kill the Prophet, peace be upon him. That was their target. That was their objective. By killing the Prophet, this call of Islam will stop. They all marched. The Rasul wasallam was not hiding distance from the army, just encouraging them from distance and telling them, fight, fight for the cause. He himself was in there. He even got injured, brothers and sisters. A piece of metal entered his cheek. He lost his tooth. He fell in a ditch. He fell unconscious for some moments. Yes, there were those that were defending and protecting the Rasul with their own lives among them. A woman called Nusayba. Nusayba. The Prophet said, I did not turn right or left, that I did not see her in front of me, defending me with her sword. She had over 80 stabs in her body to protect the Rasul. But he stood there. In every battle, brothers and sisters, that the Rasul headed, there was never a defeat. He never lost a battle in his life. It is not the excellence of strategy and tactics, which we will talk about in upcoming episodes, about the Prophet being the leader and being the commander-in-chief and being the head of state. It's his courage that made those who with him fight till the end. It is courage that he showed while he is among the tribes that were known for their bravery. It was within the Arab culture that you do not run away and die while you're facing your enemy. But what they saw from the Prophet, peace be upon him, was beyond their imagination. We come to a conclusion of our, of our episode, brothers and sisters, hoping that I will see you again within the prophetic trends, the prophetic traits of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I'm your host, Abdul Hakim Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.